Hey everybody and welcome back to the Adventures with Andy Halloween Mega Venture. All this week we're going to be making and baking and crafting and creating as we lead up to our favorite holiday, Halloween! Today we're going to be making a pumpkin cake, literally. We're going to be using a pumpkin cake recipe for the batter and then we will be using this pan to turn it into a pumpkin. Sounds good. Okay. Now the recipe that we're using today is a gluten-free pumpkin pecan cake recipe that we came up with um, combining a pumpkin cake recipe and a basic yellow cake recipe from the King Arthur Flour website. Um, we've already mixed up the dry ingredients. We did this the last time that we baked a cake. We just pre-mixed the dry ingredients to make it easier. Um, for the next time, which is now. Kind of like buying a box mix at the store, but still homemade. So the first thing that we need to do is to preheat the oven to 325. It's on its way. All right, look at it's him. Not there he's, yet, he's so ahead of the game. Um, now one thing that does make this very interesting for us is that our oven is very old um, and the bottom element went out earlier this year right about the time that the pandemic hit. And we thought, well, we'll wait until that's all or, all under control before we get a new oven. We weren't expecting things to go quite this long. I don't think anybody was. Um, so we've only got one element in our oven, the top element, um, but we laid some aluminum foil on the rack and put that in the middle of the oven to kind of turn it into sort of a half oven. And that works pretty well. Um, our oven the handle also fell off the oven. I'm telling you, it's really, really old. We use things as long as we can in our house, don't we? We do. We do. We get our money's worth. But it does mean that it might take a little bit longer than normal for us to bake the cake. Um, we go by internal temperature as opposed to time the recipes say in our house. Um, all right, so that's preheating. I will post a link to this recipe over on my blog down in the descriptions. All right, first things up are the eggs. These are some sturdy eggs. They are. Ah, there we go. I'm just being too gentle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh my God, he opened the can of the pumpkin. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll pan around real quick. Chad, pan around and show them what's on the dining room table. What's up, Yelena? Did somebody open a can of pumpkin? Yep, I guess she did. And you want some? Okay. We call that the Tozy Pumpkin Spot. Because that's where she goes when she wants pumpkin. your punkers, Yelena? She says insufficient. <laughs> she is. Her, oh, she's still over on the dining room table, y'all. Her eyes are locked with laser focus on this can of pumpkin. Pumpkin is very good for cats, by the way. It's a good source of fiber for them. Just make sure it doesn't have anything other than pumpkin in it. You don't want any spices. 
a straight up 100% pumpkin. Speaking of. Yeah. Let me grab the pumpkin pie special. Oh yeah. Oh, you prefer need... the human. Uh, no, let's go with the pumpkin pie spice. Or the curry powder. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm definitely thinking the pumpkin pie spice is the way to go with this cake this time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know how curry powder would taste. Mm -hmm. So now three tablespoons of molasses. Three tablespoons of molasses. Oh, this is, it's the cap sticking on the jar already. Because we have used this before. Really? Molasses isn't something we necessarily power through, you know? Uh, no. It's not like pumpkin. How many cases of pumpkin do we go through a week? Well, cans, about three cans a week. Yeah, three cans of pumpkin a week. And that's just for the cats. Mm -hmm. Now she's looking sad because you're mm -hmm. adding things into her pumpkin. Yeah. They get canned pumpkin mixed into their canned food. So that's why we go through three cans of pumpkin a week. As you got that out, you're going to put one tablespoon of this in there. Okay, I'll let you deal with that then. Okay, so um, one tablespoon of vanilla extract. We are using Mexican vanilla extract from Pinzi Spices. I'm not an affiliate, they're not a sponsor, I just like them. Okay. Next up. Mm -hmm. Vegetable oil. Three quarters of a cup. Three quarters cup? Not one and three quarters cup. It's like almost it. That would have been really greasy. I would have hoped you would have stopped me before I got that far. Would you have? I would have hoped so. You would have hoped so. Okay. Now do you want to add the food coloring at this point as well? Um let me at least stir this up some first. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're going to use some food coloring to color the cake orange because it's a pumpkin. Oh, you put in the... Might as well. I mean, it's dry, right? Yep. Chaz put in the pumpkin pie spice in the pre-made, in our pre-made up cake dry ingredients. Seriously, all just mixing that up ahead of time and having that bag ready to go saves so much time. Obviously, we can't pre-mix up the wet ingredients. It wouldn't last that long. I'm gonna spray this for you. How's that look? Looks good. Looks good. Now you're gonna mix these together. Just a little at a time. Mm -hmm. And one nice thing about doing gluten-free is that you don't have to worry about overworking the batter like you do with gluten flour. You can't, not really. How'd you mix everything together when you made the birthday cake? Same way I'm doing now, or did you have your own method? I used the stand mixer. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Oh, so he gets to use the you sand use mixer, the sand mixer and I'm doing this manually. Mm -hmm. I see. No reason not to use the sand mixer, right? Uh-huh. So why'd you give me the hand whisk? I asked if you wanted it and you said yes. Mm-hmm. I think he set me up, y'all. Because he got the hand he got the sand mixer out and set up and everything. Ready for more? I thought the hand mixer was out because I had to use it for something. Yep. Nope. Believe this will be the first Halloween trick of the year, huh? <laughs> I see how you are, sir. I see how you are. Ready? Yep. All right, more? Just the end of it. Might as well. And then I will just fold it in there. Maybe not the end of it. I'm trying to get a better grip on it, I guess. It smells like pumpkin, y'all. That's probably good. Yeah, because we used a lot of pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Okay, I 
we're ready to move to the stand mixer. So you can get it smooth. Yep. The recipe says stir the wet ingredient and stir the wet and dry mixtures together, then whisk until smooth. Now, as you may remember, if you've seen our making butter episode, um, we do not have a whisk attachment for our stand mixer. I am not going to get out the hand mixer to whisk this though. I'm just going to use the beaters. All right. All right, that looks good. What yep. do you think? Looks nice and mixed. Mm -hmm. Thoroughly mixed. Yep. Now we only have one of these pans and this batter is really more for a two layer cake. Um, usually when we make this, we've not made it in this kind of a pan before, um, but normally when we make it in just a normal round pan, um, we get two cakes out of it. So we're gonna have to do this in batches. Half of the cake batter will go in now, the leftover will go in the fridge um, while the cake is baking and then while the first cake is cooling, we will bake the second cake. Top this up just a little bit. And I am not going to smack the cake pan on the counter because while that might level out the batter, it would also knock out any air that I managed to work in there. Crap. Chad has just pointed out to me that we forgot to put the food coloring in the cake. Okay. We can do this. We can handle this. We can do it. All right. How do you want to do this? I don't know. I just saw it sitting over there. I know, I know. Cream soon, maybe a scary pumpkin. Orange. Orange, okay. How many drops do you think? Start with five or six. Can't believe we did that. Could be an orange swirl cake. <laughs> it might be. Because I don't know if I want to mess with that too much. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You know, if Halloween hit the blood drops. <laughs> it's, no, it's not. Don't even say that. <laughs> Freak me out like that. Don't you even. All right. Yeah, I think we need a little bit more. How many more? Five again? how you know it's real folks you get to see all the mistakes and everything what do you think of that orange color I think that works because the base brown is not going to get to be a vibrant neon orange we could we could put enough in there to make it that vibrant neon orange but that would be a lot of food coloring and i'm not the kind of person that likes an overly food colored cake so i am perfectly fine with this being a more natural orange which is more like what we would get with mm -hmm. a real pumpkin yep and now as i try to do this messing things up too much. I just don't want to risk it. No, I don't want to risk it sticking to the pan. Just 
means it's homemade. I'm thinking we might have to scrape it out and put it back in. You think? You think? Okay. Can we do that? Is that going to mess it up with the PM or anything? Okay. The, the that spray? Wouldn't, that wouldn't think too bad. Okay. I didn't want that to affect the batter, but... It, I mean, it's just coming in contact with it. Well, yeah, but I don't know if it's going to pick it up and mix in or anything. We'll find out. We'll find out. All right, let's try this again. Okay. Here, you pick up the heavy bowl of stuff and I will deal with this. You got the spoon? I do. Let's try this again. Take two. Luckily, this cake is just for us, so if it's not perfect, even if it just doesn't taste great, we are the only ones affected. But I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure that the little bit of spray that it picked up didn't mix in so much that it'll affect the batter. Nope. You think I need more? No. Actually about half. Okay. Okay. I get it. Okay. I can do it. Don't touch the hot stuff. Is that how this works? Mm -hmm. Alright. Set the timer. We're going to start with 55 minutes and then we'll check the internal temperature on the cake and see if it needs to go any longer or not. And the reason for the 55 minute time mm -hmm. is the original recipe for the Bundt cake version of this calls for 55 to 60 minutes. Okay. How long is it taken for us typically when we've... When we do the flat, the round spring form cakes? Yeah. 35 to 40 minutes. So we might want to check it at that point, but just okay. expect it to take longer. Okay. All right. So. We'll let that one cook when it's done. We will put the second one in. All right, now that our cakes are baked and cooled, it's time to get decorating. For that, we're gonna to need to make some buttercream frosting, some marshmallow cream, and some spiders. Some spiders? What? You don't put spiders in your pumpkin cakes? Well, not my pumpkin cake. Valentine's Day cake, so yeah. Of course, but of course. Don't worry. These spiders are chocolate spiders. <laughs> the recipe that's on this box of confectioner sugar um, calls for one pound, this whole package, of the, of the confectioner sugar, a half cup of butter, three to four ta tablespoons of milk, and one teaspoon vanilla extract. We've found that that makes it way too sweet for our taste. So we actually double the amount of butter. Yeah, this is, this is about as simple as you get as it gets. You just take all the ingredients, put it in the bowl, mix them up. Do not let me forget the food coloring. Nope. We've actually got the little bottle of food coloring out right here so that theoretically we won't forget it. But as you know, <laughs> that has not always worked. I still forget stuff, even if it is right in front of my face. I'm going to add the sugar. Go for it. Is it putting up a fight, honey? Hmm? Is it putting up a fight? No, I'm just being very careful. Because you don't want to shower the kitchen in powdered sugar. Or myself. <laughs> yeah, let's not cover the kitchen in you either. <laughs> that would be if the blending, if the blending went very, very, very wrong. Horrible, horrible blending accident. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I need a teaspoon of the vanilla extract. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. All right. And you said three to four of the milk. Three to four of the milk. I went ahead and put four in. Okay. 
it's not going to hurt anything if it's a little bit runny. It might actually make it easier to spread. To spread considering the shape of what we're going to be working with here. It's a non-uniform shape? It, it is indeed. And I'm just going to kind of mash everything up in here a little bit to try to keep from having the powdered sugar go everywhere. I know, I could have cubed the butter before putting it in. That would have made my life easier, but... Where's the, the fun in that? That's right? the kind of thing I think about after the fact, when it's too late. Like the food coloring? Yes. <laughs> like the food coloring. <laughs> we haven't been on camera for this whole thing. Whoops. Well, they heard your voice, right? Yeah. Do you want to adjust the camera? <laughs> And Andy makes buttercream. And it's on low, so whatever. All right, that's looking pretty good. I grab a spoon and taste it, make sure it tastes good. Do you want a tasting spoon too? Sure. I'll take a tasting spoon. Can not take the whole thing? <laughs> it's not even a whole bowl of buttercream. Mm. Yeah. Tastes good? Seriously, it is much, much better with the two sticks of butter to one package of, of confectioner sugar. It's less sweet, not necessarily more healthy. Well, no. Um, I do think I want to add a little bit more milk into this just to get it a little bit thinner. It's a bit thicker than what I want for this. I think it's, it would be. Just a dash? Yeah. Okay. Just to thin it up just a little bit. Say, Wayne. That's good. And we can go ahead and add our orange food coloring. See, I didn't forget. How many drops do you think? Start with four. Not 14. <laughs> I didn't do 14. Do you need to go back to remedial math? Maybe. Speaking of pumpkin. Yelena's here. Mm -hmm. Alright, I do think we need some more mm -hmm. color. That's double, double it. Yeah. That that's that's incredibly pale. It's a pale pumpkin. Yeah. It's still a really pale mm -hmm. orange, and there's some on the sides that I need to scrape down that hasn't mixed in yet. Go for it. So I put another eight in. For a total of? 16. Yep. Right? Mm hmm And around we go. It's still a bit paler than I'm wanting. I don't think any more orange is going to get you there, though. No, but I'm wondering if we put some um, blue or black in, if that'll get us a little bit darker. Which color did you want? Um... Let's go with black. Now we just do one or two drops at first. Yeah, it's going to do three. Okay. What's the worst that could happen? It's a midnight pumpkin. <laughs> Anyone give me a little bit more milk and then splash in? <clears throat> more? A little more, yeah. Okay, there we go. All right. All right, I fear I erred. You're just gonna unscrew the lid on the orange one now? We're gonna put some more orange in here. It's an adventure, right? Yep. <laughs> eight. Another eight in, which is exactly what I didn't want to do, but. I'm, I'm new to mixing up 
cake frosting with food coloring. If it was yarn, you would have nailed it, right? No. Kind of natural. Well, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. I didn't want like, you know, cartoony orange. I wanted natural orange. You think we're at that? Yeah. I think that's a good pumpkin orange. We have absolutely no idea how many drops we used of everything, but all in all, I'd say it's good. I'm pleased with it. Are we gonna put the chopped pecans in all of the buttercream or just the middle layer? I will let you choose. Um, maybe just the middle layer because I think it's not going to spread well okay. around the outside of the cake with the pecan to be honest. Okay. That's my take. Okay. What do you think? Okay. Then we need to separate out a portion of this mm -hmm. for doing the middle. How many pecans is this? Just, you yeah, eyeballed it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, just pecans. Um, and just going to chop the hand chopper. You could technically also put the pecans in the cake as well. Um, we do that a lot of times when we make pumpkin cake and pumpkin muffins and pumpkin bread. It's gonna be a pecani center. I love pecans. Interest of full disclosure, I've never done this before. We normally just eat lopsided cakes. Should have got you a spirit level. It'd be perfect for Halloween, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? Spirit, yeah. well, you see what he did there? Yeah. Yeah, this is what I love like. All right. Yeah, we'll say that's done. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll say that's levelish. I'm just cut this bit right here. I'll just put that right back there. Pretend that never happened. Never ever. Never ever. I also need to level this one off. So I'm just going to use the other one as a perfect level. Yeah. There's like tools and stuff you could get to do this, but. Get, get you some garroting wire. <laughs> McGarrity wire? McGarrity wire, there you go. It's pretty level. Look, yeah. it's starting to become a pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Don't break that. Now I'm just going to... Yeah, you were probably right again. What's that? That I mean, I says I had too much frosting for the inside. Because this just needs to be a thin layer. You're just eager. Well, that was a whole lot of cons, too. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know how we were going to use it. So. Uh, well, true, because we had originally talked about putting them in the cake. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so much easier than what we... This is the first time we've done... Uh, we've decorated a cake with this spin thingy. Turntable? Spin thingy. <laughs> Technical term. Um, with this turntable. We just got it. At the same time that we got the molds. Before that, we were just putting it in the, the cake box or just a regular plate and doing our best with decorating on that. It wasn't too easy, so I told Jen, if we're going to keep making cakes and decorating them, we need a spin thingy. You know you love me. <laughs> You'd be bored without me, right? Mm-hmm. Look good to you. I'm gonna spread that out just a little. There's a little dent right there. There you go. That looks good. All right. All right. And now we just take the other half, put it on top, being careful to line everything up so that the sides line up properly.
Harder to move now? Yeah, well. It's a sticky. It's got the glue in there now. Mm -hmm. Now you may have noticed there is a giant hole in the middle of our pumpkin. We're going to fill that partly with these leftover bits of cake. You want a bite? Mmm, it's nummy. It sounds just like pumpkin bread. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you're gonna put more in there, or... I just want this to form kind of a bottom base. I put a little bit more in there. <clears throat> just kind of filling the bottom with that. Now we're gonna make the marshmallow cream and the chocolate spiders to fill the rest of that in. And then we'll use some more of this um, as a layer over the top, and then we will finish frosting it. Assuming, of course, they stop eating mm -hmm. this. It's yummy. To make the marshmallow cream, it's basically the same as what we did when we made the Halloween marshmallow peeps in our earlier, in our first Halloween mega venture adventure. So if you haven't seen that one, yet check it out the only difference that we're making is we are out of gelatin so this time we're going to substitute xanthan gum which you can do Sorry. it's okay <laughs> which which you can do um just from what i've read online you use half as much xanthan gum as you would gelatin all right everything's made and it is now time to assemble First, I'm going to get the, our chocolate spiders. Okay, so there's spiders in spider webs. Mm. And I'm just going to put them in our marshmallow cream. It didn't, the marshmallow cream didn't turn white like when we made the peeps. Um, that's probably because of the xanthan gum. We could have kept mixing it to see if it ever did, but when we got to this point, we're like, you know, that's actually going to look even cooler than if it was white. And it had the marshmallow consistency you wanted too. So. Yeah, it had the marshmallow consistency. It tastes like marshmallow. We're happy with it. Yeah, but all 10 in there or just five? I think just five. I don't think 10 is going to fit. Nope. We're just going to pour this right into the middle. Perfect amount. It's like we planned this. Yeah. We didn't. Nope. We just eyeballed. Take some more of the cake from what we cut out in the middle and just put that on the top. Just sort of fill it in. Just to give something for the buttercream to go over. 
And now, we just start putting the buttercream on. The buttercream sat in the fridge while we were making everything else, so it has chilled. It's thickened up a little bit. It's thickened up a little bit. It's so hard to spread. Starting to look pumpkin y. Yes, I think good. It's coming into shape. Now, we have to decorate it. Mm -hmm. I know what you're thinking. But we just did! You put frosting on and everything! <laughs> There's spiders inside! And spider webby goo! What are you talking about? You get to cut out two eyes and the scary mouth out of that leftover bit of cake. stick out over the top. That's fine. It's however you want to decorate your jack-o'-lantern. Get the crumb off there. There we go. Eyes. Okay, right just put them on. No, no, that's eyes and eyes. Eyes and cards. Huh? Eyes and cards. Eyes and cards. They're taking the hobbits? Yeah, I think they are. Get some to work right here. Did not mean to yank it away from you. So these are the eyes you said? Those are the eyes, yeah. All right. Careful. Don't hurt yourself. I won't. It's just cake and frosting. Mm -hmm. What? Getting all messy. I know. I know. I'm so covered in buttercream. It's not even funny. All right. So that's the first eye. Mm -hmm. See how I'm doing this. Yeah. It's it's not a professional technique or anything. No. It's just this isn't something you learn from a cooking show? Nope. No. No, I don't think they do this on great British baking show. I think they do a much more refined method. This wouldn't this wouldn't get you a you know a handshake. I don't think I'd get a whole Hollywood handshake for this particular technique. Probably get a raised eyebrow. <laughs> Probably that. If you're sure that's how you want to do it and you don't want to listen to me, look. All right. I 
I have to wash my hands now. Oh wait, no, I can't yet. I need to do the stem first. You may remember this from when we made our homemade peeps. I told you we'd be using it for another adventure. This is our pumpkin stem. But since our pumpkin is a much more sedate color and not that bright candy cartoony orange, I'm going to go ahead and put some of this buttercream over the top of the stem so that it matches. Yeah, this is going so much easier now that I'm just using my fingers. <laughs> my hands are clean, it's fine. You get up on all sense of propriety. That's right. I'm pretty sure everyone who knows me knows that I don't really have a sense of propriety, do I? <laughs> do I have a sense of propriety? Sure you do. I have a sense of we will figure it out and make it work. <laughs> That's what I have a sense of. All right, there we go. How do you want it in there? You want this side up? You decide. You want this? Oh, okay. Your call. My call? Mm -hmm. We'll do it this way. Let's see if we'll stand up. Oh, your knife. What? I don't know if buttercream is a structural element. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not making fondant. Mm -hmm. Not going to crank some out real quick? Nope. I've never made fondant. We can do that sometime, but not today. Stay. Do we want to fix his mouth? It's up to you. Do you like him with the... He's kind of goofy. There we go. All right, now we just have to put the rest of the spider webs. You can put some on too, Chad. Yeah, that looks like a nose. And two ghosts that we made. I don't know if I can get this again. And there you go. We made a pumpkin cake! <laughs> and we still have leftover cake and icing. Yeah. So now there's only one thing left to do. What's that? Cut it open. You're gonna cut it open? Eat a slice of cake. What if you find any pumpkin seeds? <laughs> that would be impressive! Because I don't think they're ripping. Y'all ready for this? I'm gonna cut it out the back so he doesn't lose his face left. Yeah, but... Marshmallow goo on the inside. <laughs> you kind of have some of the the guts. The pumpkin guts. The pumpkin guts. It's so gooey. <laughs> okay, that is just that's awesome. <laughs> 
You ready? Mm-hmm. The marshmallow gives it an interesting taste. Yeah? Uh-huh. What does it taste like? Marshmallow? Mm-hmm. It tastes like pumpkin marshmallows. Mm-hmm. They're really good. Now you know what you're having for dinner tonight? Um, I believe we're having barbecue chicken for dinner. Oh, right. We're having pumpkin marshmallow cake for dessert. <laughs> I hope you had a wonderful time baking this awesome, gruesome, funny looking pumpkin cake with us. Be sure to like the video and make sure that you hit subscribe and notification so that you don't miss, you don't miss any of our adventures, especially so you don't miss any of the rest of our Halloween 2020 mega adventures. You have a wonderful day and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye, everybody.